We're live. Well, oh, hold on. Meeting is being recorded. Continue. We might have to edit this bit out. <laughs> right. Hi. Hello. Hello, hello Laura. <laughs> Good to see you. Yeah, and you, how are you doing? We're fine. We're fine. It's particularly good today because sun's shining. But you know, no, it's a bit. Um, every day's a bit samey. A bit samey. It is, it is a little bit samey. It's a bit groundhog day. It's nice when the sun is shining and the rain is not coming down because then we can go out for more walks. So. <laughs> we actually have our first daffodils out today, so things are looking up. Excellent, excellent. So for those who don't know, um, so Jill is a, is a very good friend of mine for many years um, and she runs a business, a founder and runs a business called Parenting and You. So I've got some notifications coming up that I need to get rid of. Uh, and so Parenting and You, so Jill is a parent and life coach. Um, and actually, this is a bit personal to me because um, I'm a, a client as well as a friend. <laughs> um, a lovely client. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, Jill has helped us. I won't go too much into detail because it's quite personal. But uh, on a, 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 um, a, an overall view, um, Sophie, my daughter, one of my twin daughters, who's 11, we had some um, little wobbles, should I say. Uh, a few years ago um, with anxiety, um, with depression, I would suppose you would call it, um, quite low, uh, you know, phases. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I would say mostly it was the lowness and the self-esteem was low. Um, she had trouble with anxieties, but confidence and friendships and things like that. So, yeah. so Jill, helped us get harmony back into our household <laughs> um, which yeah, you did had, most of that you did most of that but oh, well, with your guidance with your with some guidance, guidance yeah but yes yeah. um and Jill taught us something called descriptive praise which we might touch upon mm -hmm. later on in this but uh there were some really helpful tips and really uh life-changing stuff actually so we have had a more harmonious uh, family atmosphere here um not to say it's all perfect but it's it's better um so thank you very much for that yeah. so i'm a, a a testimonial as we speak um <laughs> but what i wanted to do is slightly different from videos that i've been doing recently on my blog um obviously what i do um for those who who know me and who don't know me i raise awareness for vestibular conditions because they're quite uh misunderstood or not understood um and mental illness as well as a sufferer of anxiety and depression and PTSD myself and vestibular migraines and neuritis and triple PD. So this is a slightly different video yeah. for me. However, it is slightly on topic too, because we're going to be talking about anxieties and, you know, lowness and things like that throughout this, this Zoom. Um, so yes, it's going to be really lovely to chat to you. So we shall kick start um, you. Off. I've been looking forward to this. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So. So if you tell us just quickly about sort of what you do mm. um, for people uh, with children or just life, basically. Yes. Ab absolutely. Well, as you said, I'm a I'm a parent educator, trainer, coach, and also life coach. Um, and the, well, actually the parenting skills that I teach are very much life skills. So there's a good crossover there. But yes, I work with um, individual parents, couples. Um, I, I did run face-to-face -face training courses, but that's all out of the window at the moment. And I'm working on putting most of my stuff online from now on because during lockdown, I've been doing Zoom consultations and I found that works really well um, because many parents don't really want to go out in the evening or get babysitters and so on. It's really useful to actually get into using Zoom for this. But I, I hope I will get back to some face to face. But yeah, so that's what I do. I help people. I teach basic parenting skills and I also help people with problems. So I do personal consultations and um, it's it's great because uh, I find it very rewarding and 
I learn all the time. And the main reason I started it was to keep me on track as a parent. Mm. My kids are now older. I've got one still in school and one at university. But, um, you know, even now, all the time, I use these skills. And when I forget them, the kids remind me of my skills. <laughs> so they're really, it's really, uh, it's good to do. And I, I love meeting new clients and I find it very rewarding. There's lots and lots of difference you can make with just a few small tweaks. And you can make, um, you know, some really quite big changes too. So yeah, if anybody's interested, I'd always be happy to help. I have to say that Jill's children and I've got my husband to vouch for this and my parents have met them a year ago or so and they are the most polite individuals oh. ever but just really warming characters you know and you've oh. done such an amazing job and if I do half of what you <laughs> I'd be very happy but well, um, you that, know, but you are... know the trouble is Laura we're all perfectionists so it's, I love <laughs> to hear you say that but I'm always trying to stop myself thinking about the things that I would like them to do differently because yes, I, yeah, they well, are amazing. All the, or they're all amazing, but you know, there's we must we must steer clear of perfectionism. It's yeah stuff. Yeah. But um, yeah. Anyway, well, thank you. That's lovely. No, I won't tell them. They're, they're very, <laughs> yeah, they're, I keep them on their toes. But um, they're very friendly and just very warm and um, and and chatty. I like the, mm. the fact that they're chatty and and I think. I think that's quite, and we'll touch upon this maybe going through, is what you have instilled also in us with Sophie is particularly, and not forgetting you did some stuff with Ella as well, mm -hmm. um, because she had some self-esteem to, to, you know, work on. Um, and it's made them talk better. We, we were always good talkers, but actually it's, it's opened them up to be better uh, yeah, at really talking and communicating. And I yeah. think that's, really helped because when they've got a problem or when they've got a little worry they're more inclined to actually come to me or Nick you know to mm. talk about that or they talk to each other about it which is that lovely is rather than being a bog ahead they're, yeah. they're more inclined to talk to each other which is really nice well that's that's brilliant especially at the moment because having that communication is so vital to mm. dealing with all the issues that we've all been facing yeah you know, the past year so if, if, if talking communicating especially when you've got big feelings to deal with which kids often have big feelings to deal with at the best of times right now they've got especially big ones and so and communication is, why, is key mm. this is why i wanted to do this zoom and i think it's very poignant at the moment we were chatting just before we went live with this um that at the moment particularly it's it's you know it is a worry for and, and a very anxious time for everybody adults and children um and i think at the moment with the homeschooling and with with sort of no you know confirmed end in sight um it is a, a worry um and i thought that you know by chatting with you and then telling people what you do as well um is a you know to help to help others sort of go through if they're struggling um to help them really um so i think uh, we, we were going to talk firstly about uh, self-care um and yes. about our self-care in a selfish aspect but you know it's important well it? it's vital and it's not it's actually not selfish really because um as I said, we, we create the weather, we create the environment that the kids are in, um, their whole environment at the moment. Um, so they need us to be okay. They really need us to be okay. So we have to think very carefully about looking after ourselves, physically, mentally, emotionally, um, so that we have the resources to help them. Yeah. Um, it's like that, that sort of, you know, um, that uh, old adage that we always hear about you know on on the airplane that you must put your oxygen mask on before you help others we've That's, heard that before yeah. I'm sure but it's really really true um so I think there's a number of things that we need when we're looking after ourselves is uh, particularly in this current situation I think we need to we need to be brave I think we really need to have a, a good dose of courage because we have to be strong enough to know when to let go of the worries that we're having. 
um, it's very natural to want our children to be doing everything the school sends home um, and to be, you know, making sure that they complete all their tasks and, 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 and worrying about their schedule and their chores and all these things that we feel we must do to sort of teach them and so on. But um, we also need to have a big dose of courage because we need to know when to let go. We need to focus, I think, at the moment more on health and relationships than we do on teaching. Um, and we need to accept our lack of control. We can only influence what we can influence. We can't change the situation that we're in. We can only choose how we react. Mm. So I think um, really that courage is important. Um, also the courage to to refocus on what matters most, to have our, to think about our own values, what matters most to us and our family and our children, and to focus on whether we are spending our time and our energy on those things, or whether we're trying desperately to keep up with an externally imposed schedule, which may actually, in the process of trying to do that, be causing more harm than good. I'm not suggesting we don't do the homework that's been sent home yeah but but, but, but it's, a balance, know, it's a balance to be yeah. struck and and sometimes um it's hard we, we also need to have courage when we when we decide which battles to pick you know we can't we can't insist on everything being perfect right now um and you know maybe it doesn't matter whether all the clothes are in the laundry in the laundry basket so much as that it matters that you know the kids are talking to you and that they're happy and smiling you know I, I think that was one of the biggest tips that I took back from the last consultation that we had with you is we have we were having trouble um you know like kids do play you up and and they drop things on the floor and there's coats on the floor we go for a walk there's everything yeah. everywhere yeah. and it's so easy to become impatient and kind of het up and you're juggling everything and we've just gone out for a walk and a lovely walk and we come back and it's then a mess in the house yeah. you know for for me particularly having to clean the house and work and do everything oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, absolutely it, then and I'm just like and so instead of shouting what what you told me to do was actually does it really matter that that coat's on the floor does it really matter that they've done this does it mm -hmm. you know and prioritizing things that's the, the um, ground baking yeah. thing the, the life-changing thing recently that you taught us to do was that kind of you know risk assessment type you know it's exactly that's exactly what it is really you have to to matter matter if that doesn't matter. if that plate doesn't make its way from the the lounge to the kitchen that they've just eaten on does it really matter of course we want to have them take the plate <laughs> Well, we, we, we do, but, but what happens when we insist on everything being perfect, or we try to, we never will be perfect, um, no. so we should accept that straight off, but, <laughs> yeah. but you know, when we try and do that, we, we're actually, we're not helping them, um, because I think one of the biggest things that the kids are going to get out of this is, is a huge amount of resilience. You know, they probably will have more resilience than previous generations, unless you go back as far as the war, That's perhaps, true. which would be different. But, you know, they will because they've had to deal with this. And that is vital to success in life. However you define success, um, it is vital. Um, and, it, and, and anybody you talk to, well, any psychologist or therapist will tell you resilience is key. Um, and what they're learning is resilience. Now, if we're too perfectionist about things, we knock that um, resilience. Um, we want to be able to praise them for their effort. If they've put, you know, a couple of things in the laundry basket or hung up the coat, but they've left the shoes muddy in the, in the middle of the hall. Well, you, you know, if you praise, descriptively praise um, what they have done, you're encouraging them to do more. Mm. you're making them want to please and cooperate as opposed to only focusing on the negative side which is what they haven't done and that's not good for mindset either and at the moment we really need to try and foster that positive mindset we don't want to pull them down and, and make them feel worse um so you know i think i think you know let go of that perfectionism focus on 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 you know praising what they have done what they can do um, and, you know, we can pick up the rest of the stuff later. You can't really teach them anything or insist on anything 
long term unless you have a strong connection mm -hmm. so perfectionist tendencies tend to destroy connection the connection i mean the um the ability for them to open up to us to to want to share with us and vice versa um and to want to be together you know and, and to you want that because as they get older you know they're really um going to pull away they need to become more independent but you still need to want that connection because you want to maintain some influence mm -hmm. and you want to be able to guide them mm -hmm. so you know focus on that connection try and drop the perfectionist tendencies that we all have and we're getting stressed around the house being a mess i am i have to admit because it is worse than it's yeah, ever mine, been. Mine's a like whirlwind, like literally from when the moment they wake up to the moment they go to sleep, it's just literally everything is. But, you know, and I have to keep, it is quite difficult to get in the mindset of descriptive phrase. I have to say, of everything that we were taught, I, I found the descriptive phrase really difficult to grasp after it, having such a habitual parenting style to suddenly go into descriptive pet praise and not picking up all the negatives all the time mm. but actually pushing those aside and actually picking up the positives i found that really tough at the it, it, is, it, it is absolutely <laughs> it's because it's a whole shift yeah and we're all creatures of habit aren't we yes. and so yes. this is why when you're trying to to adopt a new way of doing things you have to really practice you have to set yourself little reminders and strategies that will enable you to remember i had um, post-it notes everywhere post-it notes Absolutely. positivity <laughs> exactly because the thing to remember is that we get more of what we pay attention to yeah. so if that's stuff we don't like things that are going wrong things that haven't been done unacceptable behavior we notice it we comment on it we're going to get more of it if we notice the good stuff the things the, the effort that's been made however small it might be the little small steps in the right direction um then we're going to get more of that so well, you, say, you say also your line is to refocus on what actually matters the yes. most yes. so you know that's interesting that phrase on its own because you know what matters the most well getting out and getting into nature and getting mm. walking and going on bike rides you know connecting that's all connecting isn't it so everything that we can do to connect yes um and uh and I remember you know a couple of years ago when we started this process with you we needed to lift both of their self-esteem and what was really interesting in, in, in that line refocus on what matters is the connection Nick and I had with the kids but individually how we connected with them how mm. Nick connected with Sophie how Nick connected with Ella and likewise with me so I remember you um every other Saturday we used to spend time with just one of them one and on one activity and that was just absolutely incredible. absolutely and this is this is one of the things that because it will be different what you yeah. bring to the family what he brings and the relationships are all different but they're absolutely so nurturing and that's what we need at the moment so is, yeah. one of the concerns i know that parents are having at the moment is how to discipline the children at the moment because it's yeah, like we're always on their case and and this is where the you know that one-on-one -on -one time focusing on what matters also helps you know so you know if you can if you can make it even 10 minutes focus time that you have with them one on one it's worth an hour of being half present you know doing something else at the same time and letting and actually letting oh gosh sorry i don't know what's happened here oh, looks all right to me oh dear i've had a call and i can't get the screen back i can see you <laughs> you yeah how do i get the screen back to see you oh uh, here we go sorry about that <laughs> back <laughs> that's the thing that's the problem with uh multitasking that's what you're that's doing the problem with, with the working day yes uh, precisely so sorry about that that might happen again unfortunately oh, no no well, don't don't worry it's fine but in um, working day yes well you, yeah <laughs> you you are 
<laughs> I know it's it's really really hard. Um, but yeah, so if you can if you can have that focus time, ten minutes, and is better than an hour when you're not really focused. And it's but even with homeschooling, you know, if you can have ten minutes with them. Um, really giving them your full attention, they'll get far more out of it. And it's also worth remembering with homeschooling that 20 minutes one on one time um, with with, you know, homeschooling, working on something that school has sent home is much is, is equivalent to about an hour in school, you know, so, right. you yes. know, it, it's not the number of hours, it's the quality of time and quality mm -hmm. of input. Um, so, you know, they may be able to do things independently if you've been there helping them understand it set them up get going and so on but the same thing applies with it with, with with discipline because if you if you have a connection if you you if you use empathy and so on if you if you fill their cup you know the expression if you fill fill them their cup you make them feel really good about themselves through lots of positive descriptive praise um lots of understanding lots of lots of time and connection then they will feel much more calm, much more in control, much more empowered. They will feel more motivated. So it's also lovely if you can if you can choose little things that you individually do that's special to you. So something that they just do with mum. Yeah. Like a little yeah, routine that they always them, go through with dad. Giving them the choice of the activity or or yes. I think that was the main thing was we weren't deciding what we were going to do as the parents, but we were saying to the girls, what would you like to do for this hour with mummy or daddy, or what would you like to do? And it's the same with the homeschooling actually is, um, and we we did this actually uh, at the, the first lockdown is, is actually asking them what lesson do they want to start first or what, what do they want to do? Uh, have they had enough? Are they tired? Do you, do you want to have a half day? Yeah. Do you want to go yeah. for a walk? Do you, so actually asking them, you know. Uh, yeah, so, so powerful. Absolutely, because they have very little control over anything at the moment. I mean, a lot of us are feeling that. Kids especially are feeling that. Um, they're just, you know, they, they have this little, this little environment that they have to operate in and these things that they're being told they need to do. And a lot of the sort of distractions that they normally have are no longer available to them. But there's still an awful lot that they can do. And if you give them choice, you can you can actually control the choice. You can give them young children only one or two things. You know, would you like beans or would you like peas? Would you like one story? Would you like two stories? Well, you know, it's funny, it's actually, like with the activity or that activity, <laughs> you know. But, but, with, the, but with the food now, I don't actually give them a choice because I get too many. Like <laughs> Ella wants this and Sophie wants that. And by the time I've done, I've made about four meals. So um, you have to limit their options. Yeah. <laughs> within a framework. But yeah. I don't ask them what they want for dinner. It just no, no. <laughs> but that's the thing. I mean, you can say this or that, you know. So, but they still have then some choice. They feel they have some control. When yes, they feel they, they have some control, yeah. Yeah, they, I they do will... often say, uh, if, if I know that they're going to, yeah, go to one, I'll always give them a choice and then try and drive them to, yeah. Exactly. You, you, can, you can manipulate to some extent, as long as you don't do it too obviously. No. But, yeah, yeah. but, but it's, it's so important. I mean, even, even today, I said to my, my son, because he's working very hard at the moment, he's, he's doing his A-levels. Well, such as they are, we don't quite know what they're going to be. But and I, I said to him, look, I want half an hour with you today. Just just us. Half an yeah. hour. Yeah. Um, what do you want to do? And he said, I don't know. <laughs> and I said, well, um, think about it. Let me know after after we've done this. I, I, I'll ask you. And I asked my daughter and she said, I want you to teach me to parallel park. Well, that was the last thing I thought of. I was thinking she'd say, oh, you know, can we do this? But no, she said, can you teach me? I thought, well, no, yeah, OK, no. I can do that. But, but, you know, so just give them, you know, and, 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 and make them think about that because then they have they have some control. And you can also give them control within within homeschooling, too, because yeah. if they have something that they need to do and it's not it's not terribly prescriptive. There is some leeway as to how they do it. And there usually is. Mm. You can ask them mm. to ask you questions. You can ask them to teach you almost. Yeah, that's a good idea. I love that, you know, often. Yeah. 
we um the, the last lockdown not so much this one but what we did was we got the whiteboards down from their room and actually they were uh, we took turns and writing up uh, maths and sums on the board or questions and they took turns being teacher and it was quite it was a sort of role play thing but it was actually really nice and it gave them uh, a more independence and more sort of uh, control yeah. over the situation the self-esteem was up they really enjoyed it exactly. um, and actually this time homeschooling what because I'm working five days a week it's really difficult to yeah. uh, for me to to be there all the time with the homeschooling um i'm really lucky that they love learning and they get on with with school very well thank goodness i know a lot of people really struggling because their yeah. children do not want to do it full stop um so what i've done is i've divvied up the lessons so that my brother-in-law's doing the maths on zoom uh, which he's loving doing and they're loving him and it's making their relationship tighter as well although they were very close yeah. to begin with he's getting to know them even more um, my mum's doing some of the uh, other lessons um, and we've also got a private English tutor as well which we needed anyway even if they mm. weren't back to school so it has helped me a lot it's given me a little bit more downtime so I can yeah, actually yeah. do some work but they're really enjoying seeing their granny on screen and it's not just a, a, a sort of fun FaceTime thing it's more mm. of a, a, you know they can show off their skills of whatever they've learned and yeah it's just absolutely really absolutely and and they will remember that and yeah. they will remember this 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 way of doing things can be continued afterwards and those relationships will be strengthened because in 10 years time they won't remember what they learned in their geography lesson no. They will remember how they felt during the lockdown period and how you behaved and what those relationships were like and what their uncle did and what daddy did and, and, and what it was like, you know, learning with granny. And they will like. remember the lots of walks that we are they doing. Will, yes, <laughs> they will remember that. They, they won't remember their geography lesson. Um, but, you know, well, I hope they remember some of it, but, you know, a lot of it they won't. And it's it, it doesn't matter because it's the people that they are becoming that's important and yes. being creative, um, you know, thinking about what's important in the homeschooling, setting your learning goals. And that might be different to the school's goals, for example, if you, you know, if, they, if they're getting on with their homeschooling tasks, fine, then no problem. But but creating a schedule that works for you and focusing on the learning goals that work for you may be more important. So this may be an opportunity to focus on something that perhaps individually they don't get much attention for at school. Yeah, but you have a little bit more time to focus on it at home and you might say, well, look, you know, we're going to major on the maths, for example, because, you know, that will really pay dividends. Maths and English are the two most important subjects, that, you know, for younger children to grasp. So you might decide to sort of focus on on those things um be creative in how you do it maybe as i said get them to teach you you be you be the child you ask the questions ask relevant questions get them to find out the answers you know um yeah. you can don't try to be their teacher in the sense that there's the you know their real teacher is their teacher you are their first and their best teacher in life generally and also i think we've, you know, we've found that um don't be afraid to just take an afternoon off for a day off yes it is. absolutely we've, we've done that quite a lot we've told the teachers you know we said no we had thursday off we had monday afternoon off yes. we had a snow day we had this and actually do you know we are our best just judges of how yes. the, our children are are behaving and how exhausted they're getting and i knew that they were getting exhausted some particular days and i said to nick you know i think let's just have a day off absolutely if, if it's not working change this environment get outside mm. or you know play a game do some rough and tumble you know have a pillow fight do something different that's going to change the mood and come back to it when everybody's focused because they're yeah. not going to learn anything when they're it's not, not the end of the world if, no you know it's not the end of the world. they will catch up i mean i mean you know they all the kids are in the same position um, I know we hear lots of stuff on the news about how, um, you know, the children are going to be, you know, that they, they're going to really struggle because of this, this lost time in school and, and some, yes, that, you know, depending on the individual um, child and their needs and the, and, and the family situation, some, some kids, yes, are really struggling, but a lot of them 
will catch up. Most of them will catch up quite easily and this will pass and they will move on and they, they're all in the same boat. So we shouldn't stress too much about it. Think about the life lessons that they are learning um, and encourage some self-reflection too. I think that's really helpful. At the end of the day, um, you know, gratitude practice, as we know, can help. Mm -hmm. Sit down to dinner as a family if you can. Talk about the day. Talk about what we've learned. Talk about what didn't go well. Why didn't it go well? How are we feeling? What are two things that we've been really happy about today? Yeah. Let's try and, you know, focus on that sort of thing. Do a bit of self-reflection and then also focus on the positive stuff because it helps to, to sort of, you know, get that positive mindset working. If we think about what we're grateful for, what's made us laugh, try and get a bit of laughter into every day, mm. somewhere along the line, by whatever means. Um, and, you know, and also you can, you can mix it up a bit. So, you know, there's various resources online that you might tap into that may not necessarily be what the school is using, but a different way of doing something that might you know get them to explore bite size or quizlet or twinkle or something like that okay. as a different way of approaching things just to just to make the change but as you say if they're not learning their mood is wrong stop do yeah. something completely yeah, different don't, don't keep pressing no, on I think don't keep it, it won't work down, uh, you know the first few weeks or quite a number of weeks press press you know we've got to get this work done we've got to do that mm -hmm. schedule da 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 and we soon found out that that just wasn't going to work. And no. we, we then were going out for our walks in the morning and then we might do a second walk in the afternoon, but we were getting a lot. Well, it was, e it was easier than this lockdown because on the first lockdown, the weather was glorious. Yeah. This one's tough because it's rainy and often the yeah. girls throughout the week will say, I wish it wasn't raining. I wish we could get in the garden. I wish we could do this. So in that respect, maybe okay, we'll take an hour off early and we'll build a den. Yes, you know, or well, exactly. We'll do something indoors. We'll get the tent out from the shed yeah. and we'll put fairy lights in it. And exactly, we'll, make, make some money. You can learn it there. Mm, <laughs> creative, absolutely, because that, no. that's fantastic. And you can even, with some, in some activities, you can incorporate a bit of learning. Mm. You, know, you can, you can um, depending on the age of the child, you know, you can, you can, you can, go out for walks, you can go to the train station, you can count the trains, you can look at the, you can read the, the, the board, you can, you can set yourself little tasks on your walk. Yeah, we've, you can, we've been do doing that on our, our walks, we've been trying to identify certain birds and certain mm. trees and yeah. trying to find flowers or, you know, not flowers, but certain things, you know, yeah, that yeah, yeah. coming up and, or oh, what's that springing up, spring's coming, you know, and they might say, oh, it's a crocus or, you know, so we are doing certain things, um, not all the well, time. That but. is wonderful because that's the kind of learning that they will remember because yeah. they're associating it with an experience and also probably the sort of thing that you would not have had time for or wouldn't have made time for in the past. Um, I think it's made us all think a little bit differently. Um, mm. I'm not, I'm not wishing to sort of, you know, belittle the difficulties or the challenges. And I think this lockdown, this lockdown particularly has been hard. The novelty's worn off. The weather's not been great. Mm. You know, and I think worries about going back to school are creeping in. Motivation yeah. is low. Um, so, you know, I'm not belittling it. But, but I think that we also can get ourselves into a bit of a... Um, a downward spiral in our negative thinking, always thinking about what isn't happening, what we haven't got, or what we can't do, rather than <clears throat> rather than the opposite. What can we do to um, uh, what's the word? Try and control our patience side of things, because what I find is that if I'm locked away in my office, you know, inevitably the kids are generally very good, and they know that they don't come in when I'm on the phone or if mummy's working um, but I want an open door I don't want them to feel that they no. can't come in uh, but it's if I'm on the phone it's difficult mm, you know mm, 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 mm. hanging around <laughs> I, know, um, I know but it's if I'm really busy of the day um, and they come in and ask a question I tend to snap sometimes I tend to oh you know my patients because I'm busy and I'm juggling and I you know um, just help them on something, for example, and then I go and sit down and do some work and I get involved in it. How can we rein that back in and gain control of our own patience to not 
yeah nasty that way in in you know I know, I know what you mean. It's we, we, we have, a lot of us have a short fuse right now. Even yeah. you know, uh, I, I absolutely well. Well, I think if if connection is the most important sort of parenting tool we have, the most important thing that we have to do as a parent is to look after ourselves. As we said, the oxygen mask is important. We will you know you have to do the foundation work we will be impatient if we're stressed mm. so um the first thing we have to do is to try and look after ourselves really really well um and it is hard um that's why um we do need as i said we need to have courage we need to accept that we have to let some things go mm. we also need to think about what support we need and and how we can get it and again we can be a bit creative um and um, the same, same with the kids, you know, we can may, maybe, um, maybe we're fed up with Zoom, but perhaps we can, you know, instead of meeting a friend for coffee, we can have a coffee break in the morning, we schedule a coffee break for 15 minutes, and we get a coffee and we, we ring a friend, mm. you know, and we Zoom so a friend. Having breaks of a few more breaks. Have, a, have a break. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exercise, rest, um, make sure that you do at least one thing every day that that you that you will enjoy doing for its own sake yeah. something something pleasant something fun something relaxing something creative um so you know do that um and and i think also another thing that's really useful we talked about before we started was is recognizing when we're being triggered by something now it it, it may be that we have underlying worries that are causing us to be impatient and to snap and those worries or anxieties can you know we can we can look at them we can analyze them a little bit which might help us to have some perspective so you know we, we can take a worry for example and we can say well look is this a hypothetical worry is this a real world worry is this something i can do something about or is it something i can't if it's a hypothetical worry like like we said you know um will they ever catch up at school um you know you know I will I will I ever be able to sort of you know get through um the the program that I was trying to get through and will I will I ever you know achieve the promotion I wanted or will I you know all these sorts of things we don't know we don't have crystal balls um and they're not they're not things that we're currently in a position to control we need to think about what we can control if it is something we can control we need to make a plan we need to do something constructive that will make us help us to deal with that um, and i think i think that's that's a really helpful mechanism you can also i don't know if it's if it's useful to think about this for children think about how we we, well, we can do it for ourselves and we can do it for children so for example if you've got a real worry that's making you impatient and irritable you can sort of try and park it you can say okay i can't deal with that now this is something i have got to all I've got to, to grapple with. I've got to get to the bottom. Just got to decide what plan I'm going to put in place to sort this out. You can, you can, you can make yourself a time. You're going to say, okay, well, look, you know, after dinner, I'm going to sit down for 45 minutes and I'm going to just work through my options here, and I'm not going to think about it till then. So you maybe prioritizing it as, you know, when we were talking about earlier, um, choosing our battles. Yes. With, with kids of which parts are not important and which parts are important yes. to pick out on maybe that's what we do as adults in our working life or whatever we're doing is prioritizing and picking out what things are most important yes. what things are least important yes and exactly exactly leaving them uh, until the end of the day when we're not working or leaving you see what i mean that's exactly that's prioritize think about what you can what you can influence what you can control and what's most important to you mm. what will if it won't matter if you let it go I mean, you might want to do everything, but if it won't really make a difference if you let it go, then let it go. Try not to be the person who's who's juggling everything. Multitasking doesn't really work terribly well. well I, I felt um, quite overwhelmed a couple of weeks ago. I had a bit of a meltdown one Saturday <laughs> um, because I felt that actually I find the weekends quite tough ooh. because I'm not working. Um, I am working a little bit on LinkedIn and stuff. Mm. I'm not fully working all day um I've not got homeschooling and I've not got all these things to keep my adrenaline and busyness up 
So I find the weekends, although they should be really relaxing, I find them anxiety triggering. Mm. I find them stressful because I don't have, um, yes, I've got enough to do, but it's not as brain taxing. Well, then, yeah, no, I know exactly what, what you mean. Oh, so I oh. get quite... oh, that's my turn to... My turn is time to cause problems. Uh, yeah, but, but, you turn but my phone off now because it's... Yeah, well, I, I, I turn mine off too, but there's an alarm on it. And so, anyway, it's gone. Sorry about that. But no, I think if you, um, if you, if, if you know that's a problem, then you can think about, this is what I mean, you can park it, you can think about, okay, so what can I do? I'm not going to think about that now, but I'm going to make a time when I think about how I'm going to plan that week at the weekends to be less stressful. Mm -hmm. So... For example, would it help if I had if I made myself a schedule like I have during the week, yeah. you know, of a plan for the day, and I worked through that instead of sort of all these things floating around that could be done, or maybe not done. But you know, there's lots of options, and 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 you know, it's not so structured. If I could make myself a plan, would that help me? And if so, what's going to go in it? What are my priorities? And I I think that can help. Yeah. That's um, because I find that uh, um, with me, I find a structured day much more manageable and easier to handle and less stressful than just scatter gunning on a weekend of oh god, I've got to get this done and that done and that cleaning and this and you know. Exactly. So if you make yourself it. some simple rules, like maybe a couple of simple rules about the weekend. So for example, you know, before every weekend, I'm going to make a plan. You know, okay, I'm not saying it shouldn't be totally in inflexible in it, it, it may need to be a bit flexible um you don't want to be terribly scheduled all the time but but make yourself a plan and and schedule in unscheduled time you know but schedule it in so so that you 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 feel like you know what you're doing if, yeah. if you think that would help you and that's a bit what i mean about worries if we can we make a time it's almost like the worry delay technique where you make a time to think about them and make a plan and sort them out and you can do that with children too if they're worried. You can, you, they can, we can teach them to sort of write down their worries, put them in a worry box, for example, and say, "Okay, you're worried about that. We're going to talk about that. Um, let's let's write it down on a piece of paper. Let's put it in our little worry box. Mm. Let's have a little chat about it before we put it in the worry box, if you like. And then we're going to put it in there. Now you don't have to carry that worry around anymore because it's in there, and it's safe in there." Mm. and when and if we need to talk about it we'll make a time to do that but we'll have a little chat about it before it goes in and then we'll we'll do that and you know that that can that can be helpful it can also be helpful if you make yourself a self-soothing rituals of some sort you know, think about what soothes you um children can have a calm down cozy corner i know you made one of those for your kids which was yeah great. We, we've just made a brand new one actually oh lovely <laughs> You, I think yeah. you, yeah, adults can have them too. Bean bags. Um, bean bags, exactly. But, you know, maybe there's something. We all have to have our own areas. You're right. This is exactly yeah. what another life-changing thing you did for us is actually have a calm area. Oh, that they feel secure. We feel secure. We all have our own area, whether that's their bedroom or a corner of their bedroom or a spare bedroom or whatever it be or a place outside or whatever. We have always had that area to go to, um, which has been really helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And kids can kids can get excited about making it special. You know, they have their favourite books, their toys, some little fairy lights, a cuddly, um, whatever, sheepskin or something nice. And we can do the same. We, there's maybe certain scents we like. Maybe there's a favourite book or some music or a funny podcast or something that we find will be soothing for us and 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 sort of you know that that's another thing that we can we can do of course exercise we know is tremendously helpful and so is regular healthy eating um so you know develop a sort of list of the sort of coping mechanisms that you think will help you and that will help with patience mm -hmm. so you don't snap also, I think it's really helpful to think about what you're doing. So, um, you know, don't, if, if, if the kids are worried and they come to you and you are snapping at them, criticizing them, being sarcastic, um, I don't know, denying that there's a problem or whatever it might be, but you're reacting 
and responding in a negative way, A, they're not going to come to you anymore. And B, you know, their stress levels and yours are, are going to stay up. So, you know, don't don't do that. Um, if they're upset or you're upset, they're, you, you know, the emotions are in charge, especially with little kids when their prefrontal cortex is not fully developed, their emotional brain is in charge anyway. Wait till they're calm back <laughs> before you deal with whatever it is. Um, uh, don't try and reason with them. Can't, get them to calm down first. And it's the same applies to us. If they come, if they come to us and we feel inclined to snap, we we, we just perhaps need to say, I, I will get back to you on that. I just need a moment or just give me 10 minutes and I'll come and find you. Mm -hmm. But just just try and calm down before you deal with whatever it is, because um it's not going to go well if you're emotionally, you know, triggered and you know, and, and, and same with them. Mm. This so, is a good. This is a good time to intertwine a question that um, uh, one of my members of my uh, support group asked. Yeah. Um, she's um, got an eleven-year-old daughter, and we're just talking just about opening up and them opening up to you. And if you're lucky, uh, like me, my children are very open and they're very good at talking. But what if you don't have a child that is very good at opening up or wants? used to and now has clammed up so her question is also does she know of any activities um to do with my 11 year old daughter on opening up and talking to me ah right well that is an issue that gets worse for a lot of families as their kids get older and and particularly teenage years not always but but it can do so um you can't force them to open up. Um, again, connection and all the groundwork you do on connection and communication is really important. If you can have one-on-one -on -one time. I was gonna say that's a good, good time to. Yeah, yeah, regularly, that will help build the connection. It might not help in that moment, but it will help in future in future to build, to build that, that relationship. Um, you don't necessarily have to talk all the time, you're in one-on-one -on -one time, but just, being together, doing things together, it helps to build that connection. So what you really want to try and do is get past the resistance. And, and so you need to sort of try and find out why they're not talking. Mm -hmm. And this is where a bit of emotion coaching comes in. So ask them, say, you know, you're not, you're not chatting to me, you're not telling me what, you know, I, th I think I can, I can sense that you're not feeling great or you know you seem a little bit quiet or you know and I'm and and and, and I I'm not sure what the problem is and I sense there might be something bothering you what do you think that is or would you like to share that with me um and um if they say no well they say no you say okay well I I understand that but you know I'm here I really would love to, if you change your mind, I'd really like to, to sort of, you know, try and help you to feel a little bit better. And I love it when we talk and leave it. Mm. Pushing against resistance is not going to get you anywhere. Working on the connection gradually will help. Mm. Um, through that one-on-one -on -one time, through shared activities, ask them like I did my kids today, what would you like to do? Um, and if they haven't got any ideas, suggest something. Again, if they don't, respond say okay well you know if you change your mind that's that that's fine i'd love to do it and you just you just don't get upset don't start saying well you know it'd be so much better if you talk to me don't don't go into lecture mode because that will just put the barriers up um but you know try and use empathy and and try and guess a little bit what might be the problem especially with younger children say you know are you worried about going back to school is anything bothering you about that? Maybe have a guess or, you know, have you fallen out with anybody on Zoom, any of your friends or just, you know, but um, don't, um, don't push too hard. Um, just so maybe just work on the, the connection. So the seed a little bit, like I have to do with Ella sometimes, who's not as good as opening up to me and talking to me as Sophie is. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I have to she's very very upset and clearly when sometimes she just cries for no reason and I sit her down and I sow the seed as in the, mm. obviously 
clearly something is upsetting you. If you want to talk to me, I'm here. Um, if you want to talk now about it, I'm here. But if you want to come to me later on or tomorrow or whenever, let me know. And she's 11 as well. Um, but that's sometimes, like you're saying, is not to push, but maybe sow the seed of that you're there for them if they need you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Listen. And if they do start to talk to you, get them to try and name the emotion. Okay. Um, how they're feeling. I mean, angry, sad, you know, upset. They, they, they are, they... I mean that that's that's a start, but it would be helpful to have something a bit more descriptive. So mm -hmm. frustrated, um, um, you know, I'm I'm frust you're, you're frustrated, or you're feeling left out, or you're feeling, um, I don't know, demotivated. I mean, try and get them to sort of name the emotion. There's, there's a whole list of them. You can Google a list of emotions, or I can send you know list of emotions. But try and put a name to it. Suggest them if they don't come up with them. Um, and that might spark some reaction because you're, it's about building emotional intelligence and it's about building connection. And if you can get them to try and name and describe their feelings, mm -hmm. it will help in the long run. Um, but I think, I think it's also important to say that certainly with older ones, maybe not the little ones, but maybe the older teenagers, if you, you could challenge them a little bit if you if you if they're really being really difficult about being you know, withdrawn and sort of difficult you could even say well what are you getting out of keeping yourself to yourself mm. you know that seems a bit mean but just challenge them a little bit mm. Get them to you don't have to, if, if they don't give you an answer that's fine but you've just planted the seed in their in their head what are you what are you getting out of it um and then, what when do they do when they do eventually come to you and open up and then she might maybe tomorrow or later on open up then is it moving on to things like um coping mechanisms mm. and, and help them uh you know go to the calm corner or do read a book do some yoga or meditation exactly. or, walk or <laughs> exactly. whatever it, it rock you know rocks their boat but you know it's um it, it's trying to get them as you say not forcing them to to because i think it's just easy as a parent to say oh come on what, what are you crying about you know come on yeah. tell me tell me tell me tell me tell me and they're like oh <laughs> exactly but very often a conversation if you do if you bake something or you go for a walk or you wash the dog together or whatever you might do now. having a shared experience will bring you closer and then maybe you know you can drop something into a conversation there but you have to be careful because if you're obviously fishing or obviously trying to push too hard, yeah. you may meet resistance. You've got to try and get past that resistance and especially you might have to use gentle old. activities to do it. You know? Especially at 11 years old when, you know, my girls are 13 next year and they're getting a bit wise now. Of course they, they are. They know exactly what I'm fishing for. Exactly. Um, but then you can be open about that too. So if you have that relationship, you can say so. Yeah. You, can, you can actually say, well, if you know what I'm fishing for, then why don't you tell me? Yeah, that's so you can I have a bit, of, a bit of a bit of fun over it because you've got yeah. that relationship and it, it, it's it's not about them and us it's about bonding and connection and chatting and and it and it and it and it's it's not a quick fix it's something you have to work on over time but maybe in that situation with this person who has asked this question uh one-to-one -one time would be really good i know that this person actually has other children so maybe uh, the daughters feeling that they want some one-to-one -one yeah. time maybe they do already do one-to-one -one time but maybe it would be nice to if they don't do one-to-one -one time just go out on your own with that if you've got a husband yeah. uh, or a partner or someone who could look after the kids whilst you go out on your own with or do something in the house or something together uh, but make it regular make it a reliable regular thing not a one-off or an occasional thing because if they know it's going to happen regularly they will feel so much more secure. Mm. Um, and um, and as I say, it's a long-term project, this. It's not something that you can instantly expect to see results from, but one-on-one -on -one time is always going to be beneficial. The other thing is if you've got a child who's withdrawing a little bit, you may want to be a bit, just, just think about their, their use of the internet, mm. um, social media, their phones and so on, because it's possible with them spending so much time at the moment on online that they that there is something going on in their online world that you don't know about. 
it may not be, I don't want to scare anybody, it may just be the situation that we're in or the developmental stage that they are at or their personality or temperament. But if you notice a change in behavior, um, and it might just be worth ruling that out. Um, I can definitely tell when the girls have had too much, uh, and in fact, actually they got phones for their birthday and they're not actually that bothered about them, which is actually quite hilarious. Well, it won't last, Lara. <laughs> well, I know it won't last, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it uh, at the moment, you know, and, uh, but um, I often find their phones not charged off all over the house, don't even bother with them. Mum right. texts me to say, can you get them to reply? I've texted them yesterday or whatever. But their laptops, they do like, they go on to, um, the, it's called Earscraft. It's like a sort of um, building a village and things like that. You know, so it's uh, architectural. Type yeah. thing. And then they've got fun games as well, like Roblox and stuff. But I can so tell when they've had just a little bit too much technology time and they can tell now, even now, because Ella might often say, actually, I've had enough. I want to do some drawing now. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so it is identifying how much screen time. That it, it's it, really, it's, it's really important to understand that. And, and also there's always the worry about cyberbullying or online grooming yeah. and so on. So parental controls are really important. And, um, you know, there, there are ways you can, you can you can manage that um so okay you know um, again we can put some links underneath if you like yeah, the, the really controls and so on um um and you know there, there's quite a lot of information online about uh, about how to manage screen time if you another thing that's quite useful particularly when they get older is to, is to sort of develop a screen to, uh, a family um contract if you like or family rules around screen use of screens yeah um which which you would do with the children and, and get them to participate in that yeah we, we've definitely um, um uh so yeah we have on our um set hours and um yeah. in fact actually the girls have to do certain chores to be able to get i know it sounds a bit cruel but no. you know, they've got to pull their weight around the house before they start sitting around what you Absolutely. know absolutely but there's, I was just wondering, I think I've got one here somewhere. I can't put my hands on it at the moment, but there are, oh yeah, there's something, something like this. This is one from commonsense.org, which is a website you can look at um, for information about media use. And that's a family media agreement. It's just a draft one you can fill in or you can make your own. Hmm. But, it, but, but that's the sort of thing that's quite useful to do and, you know, make your own. But having something like that is quite useful. Get them involved in making it. But also, as I said, watch for signs of change behavior and, 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 and learn a little bit about cyberbullying. Learn, learn a bit about the games they're playing, the people that they're talking to. Understand what they're doing online because it, mm. they're spending so much time on it at the moment, especially the older ones who are, less, are not monitored by us as much. Yeah. That you, you know, you you know, you can find that some of this withdrawn behavior does, can relate to that if things are going slightly wrong. Yeah, um, we, uh, we, we did have, I mean, I check the girl's phone every single night um, when they are on it. I, every night anyway, I'll go through their texts and I'll, um, and I'll get involved now and again throughout the day if they're on their laptops and on Roblox or something, I'll ask what's going on mm -hmm. and what, you know, happening and, so it is about sort of keeping in touch. <laughs> keeping in touch, exactly, exactly. And if they're into gaming, maybe get involved in the gaming. Just yeah, what, I, I, they're, they're trying to, to get me involved in building a village. <laughs> I don't have time. <laughs> I know the problem. Maybe yeah. on Saturday I will sit down and build a village with the money it's craft. Even if you don't, and, and I, I must say it is hard to get the motivation up sometimes to, um, to get involved with these media, video games. But even if you um, don't do that, just sit and watch for 10 minutes and, and comment, yeah, show an yeah, interest. Yeah. You know, it, it just helps with, with, with that whole process of bonding and, and being aware of what they're doing. Um, yeah. Also with texting, a lot of them are texting a lot at the moment. It's yeah. important also to recognise that sometimes we can't tell through text what the intention behind the text is we can't we can't get that emotional readout you know mm -hmm. you sometimes you can misinterpret something as being a bit brusque or maybe if somebody has not actually responded immediately you take it to heart and think 
We yeah. had that recently, actually, because mm -hmm. they're fairly new to texting on their own phones. They used to do it online to people and WhatsApp online, but um, this is their own phones now, and they're it's the certain etiquette you have Ooh. to sort of learn about sort of you know softening the text up a little bit um or not being offended by maybe if someone's busy let them be busy and don't put pressure on them to facetime or you know why are you busy and <laughs> Exactly. So there's been a few things like that recently. That yeah, it, it can be a bit of a minefield, especially when so much is <clears throat> we're relying so much on text at the moment and and Zoom and so on and 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 kids often if they're on Zoom they don't necessarily want to go on Zoom again socially if they're on Zoom for school and so on or, or you know online media teams or whatever it is. So I think yeah, being aware and and having a chat about that and a bit of a reality check over over you know texting maybe somebody's busy maybe they didn't feel like getting back to you they don't don't take things too too much to heart and that's that's useful but also you can use the technology to help the kids keep in touch with their friends so if they would have met up at lunchtime at school then why don't they have their lunch with their friends online yeah. you know set it up a couple of times a week with their friends parents or whatever just they can have lunch with their friends online or something like that it, use the technology to your advantage in that way if they f feel like it i mean don't force anything but if they feel like it because i think some of them are, are withdrawing a little bit from friends at the moment because they haven't got that easy connection and it's hard for them when they're young to, to maintain it online but with school about to start we hope in the not too distant future maybe having one or two lunch lunches together or a little play date on zoom when you can set up a game or something that they're mm -hmm. doing so there's some structure to it or a quiz. just to reintegrate <laughs> them a little bit before they go back to school it might help to calm some of that you know anxiety about reintegrating back into school well i think there's all the questions i mean i asked my private group what questions they would like to put towards you and it was mostly about anxieties of children, which I think is just so, um, you know, at the forefront at the moment, you know, it's, um, it, it's upsetting. It's, it's upsetting for parents to know that children haven't got their friends and the communication, the the one-to-one the -one interaction with them or the group interaction with them face-to-face. -face. It's in the, Zoom doesn't replace that. No. Um, and just going on to just another, um, a question that just stuck out at me is about a five-year-old um, and uh, you know how to help a five-year-old who has constant um, anxiety and upset and who's very easily upset and anxious but it's very very out of character of her mm -hmm. so it started about she says 10, 10 nine months ago um, obviously in this whole uh, pandemic um, mm. but it's escalated a lot so it's how I mean oh, well. five years old well unfortunately it happens at any age um, yeah. it may be something that would have happened anyway possibly because kids kids do um, you know get anxious um, as they grow and develop that can happen anyway, but it may be related to what's been happening with the pandemic. Um, but um, I would say um, the thing is to get her to try and think about the positives. So the things that went right, um, you know, and and to, and to, and to sort of try and help her to get a bit of a reality check about what you know what ask her what her worries are you know first of all what is she, what is she concerned about try and get to the bottom of it and and try and get her to think about the positives frame your questions um positively so it's not about what she can't do or what she's worried about but what you know what can she do um and what and, and what's what's been going really well um maybe writing in a um a golden book i call it a golden book oh but, yeah you know, we had the golden book, golden book or, or, <laughs> or, a, or a gratitude jar you know where you can write something down every day and pop it in your little jar um and to just sort of help you to focus on the positives but also to get her to understand um that anxiety is really 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 normal and perhaps to teach her about anxiety 
Um, some anxiety and some fear is, is, is natural and normal. And maybe teaching her about how our bodies work um, and how our brains work so that it's natural to feel anxious. What sometimes happens is the body goes too far and gets anxious about things it doesn't need to be anxious about. And actually learning about that. There are some really good books. Um, so for example, I mean, I'm not necessarily plugging any in particular, but I've got some here. Um, this one, what to do when you worry too much, a kid's guide to anxiety. And is that a one. good one for a five-year-old? Yeah, it, it is a good one. You, you need to do it with her, but yes, I mean, it's, 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 it's big pictures and, 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 and writing and so on. Okay. Um, a huge bag of worries is another one. Oh, we had that one. Brilliant. Had that one, huge bag of worries. Did you find that good? That was fantastic, that huge bag of worries. It's, I think it's a great book. And yeah. it is the and little actually, one. It is. It's got lots of big pictures and it's, you yeah. know, it's, it's good. Um, and this one is another one about, it's a mindful kids activity yeah. book. You had that one as well? Yes. Yeah, and that, that's helping kids to sometimes get sad and angry and, and, and upset about things. Has that yellow one, is that the one with the iceberg in it? Um, I think it's got an iceberg in it. I'm not sure. But the idea of the iceberg is that what the kids give you, the emotion that they express or that you perceive is not necessarily what's going on. So you see the tip of the iceberg. They may be angry. They may be sad. They may be anxious. But really, the emotion that's feeding it, the, the big worry that, or the, big, the, the emotion underneath the, the surface is what you need to get to. So there's some reason for that. Um, so this is where emotion coaching and, and talking, um, saying, you, see, you seem really upset. And I'm just, I'm just wondering, you know, what do you, think, what do you think is making you feel upset? And, and you know, and just, just try and tease out what it is and then name the emotions. Talk to them about the iceberg and explain it. Get a book, work through it together. Another thing that's quite helpful is to give the worry a character for little kids. Okay. It's quite useful yeah. to give them, you know, to, to imagine to imagine a, a character um, and give it a name. Um, and that when that when that character, you know, when that worry is obvious or the anxiety is obvious, you say, Oh, I can see George is back in the room again. <laughs> I used now, who to invited him in and what's he doing here? You know, and you can you can sort of externalize it that way. And oh, you can give him a silly name or whatever. I had yeah. um, I had a name when I went through extensive CBT for four years uh, for my anxiety and depression. I had a name for my not for the depression, interestingly, but I had a name for the anxiety. She asked me to name it. And oh, yeah. I don't know why. But, uh, and no offense to people that are called Annette out there, but I called it Annette. <laughs> okay. So, and I think the the reason behind it was because I I thought, right, Annette's turned up again. I don't want Annette here, but I'll embrace Annette. I'll let her come in and all she can do is just leave again soon. And yes. I, I remember thinking, well, I'm gonna call her Annette because I can catch her in Annette. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. It was that. It seems silly, but now. it's about using these CBT <laughs> techniques and, and externalizing it. Um, and, and 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 with little kids, it helps to be able to visualize mm. something. Yeah, very visual. Yeah. And do you think in this situation with a five-year-old, um, being very young, but um, because with a five-year-old, um, they love toys. They love soft toys. And we had uh, for the girls the worry monsters. And they're very fluffy and they've got big zips on their mouths or you could have a worry toy or whatever with yeah. a little pocket in it or something yeah. or a worry pillow with a little pocket in sewn on it or yeah, yeah, yeah. is that helpful yes absolutely absolutely because that is the focus of the worry then and you can talk about it and you can um you know this is what this is the idea of the box as well you put the worry in the box um, and then it's sort of, you know, it's parked um, and you can you can deal with it that way and, and, and talk about it as and when, but not necessarily all the time. It's safe in there. And it can say, it's the same with the, with the fluffy monsters or the, the toys, because, you know, they can be the keeper of the worry. Yes. Um, yes. And, um, you know, you can you can you can externalize your chat about it in terms you can talk about the toy. Um, yeah. 
and and it and it helps kids because they they can visualize it makes it little kids especially and actually helps. they've written it down they've physically written it down and put it into a jar or a box or a monster or you know a toy but actually what i also thought that was helpful in in our uh, life uh, here is with sophie and Della, is that they had a worry journal Mm -hmm. um so they like a diary but it was like what was the worries of the day and then what are they going to do about them and what's more in, what's a really bad worry and what's not so yeah. bad worry and yeah. so we then they chose and I didn't put any pressure on them but you taught us to sort of say to them do you want to go through that yeah. or do you not it's fine but if you want to go through it I'm absolutely, here absolutely absolutely just make yourself available I think the very act of writing it down helps it, it's almost or like it's, or a picture yes or a picture exactly um this is where play therapies and things come in you know there are therapists who specialize in things like that and sand therapies and so on art therapy because it's about externalizing it a little bit um and if you think about it, if you're worried about a lot of things if you if you write everything down before you go to bed it helps you to sleep because it's almost like you've downloaded the worry. And I, I meditate bef literally just before I fall asleep meditating. I, I have a guided meditation on my earphones and I literally wake up with my phone here because it's I've fallen asleep. That's, well, that's <laughs> fantastic because it and, works for you. And yeah. it's whatever works. And, and that's a brilliant works. idea. I and mean, there are things available for kids as well as apps that you can that you can use. Again, we can put some links to these things in. But another, another thing that's quite good is to teach kids breathing techniques as well. I mean, you know, there's I don't know if you know about the triangle one. I think we've talked yeah, about the triangle one how to do the shapes yeah and that was really helpful That's because quite... it slowed the breathing down yeah, a lot. exactly exactly uh, which is which is an app you can have on your phone and it's it's, it's really easy but with little ones like a, a five-year-old you could even get a nice cuddly toy a favorite and you you get them to lie down and they put it on their tummy and you want deep belly breaths so you want to should they lie down they become and they want to really breathe deeply and they want to see the little cuddly toy rise up and That's fall okay. down yeah and you know you can do it with them you can lie with them with cuddly toy on your tummy if you want but, i've seen you know, a big cuddly toy a big cuddly to well, yes, it's getting bigger and bigger this cuddly toy In lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know that that kind of thing i mean it's, it's it's teaching it's teaching them skills for life but also it can really calm them down mm -hmm. so you can't be anxious when you are breathing deeply and slowly mm. um, it's not possible because the very physical so act of breathing will calm your emotions the, the other thing that you um so i keep referring to this but it's cropping up and i just it, it's so poignant is uh that the other thing you taught us um is to actually um don't be as scared about anxiety and and all these emotions that they're feeling and actually when Sophie in particular, but Ella as well, but in Sophie in particular, she was quite scared of the anxiety. She was scared of the depression. She was scared of the anger, the frustration, the uh, lashing out at her, her sister. She was scared of what she was doing. And she acknowledged the fact mm. that she, she wasn't in denial, which was great mm. because she knew she was doing it. Yeah. Um, but it was teaching her how to not be so scared about those emotions and they're, they're okay to feel that. Absolutely okay. Yeah. You're right. And it, okay and normal, mm. perfectly normal. Um, and I don't know if you remember, I think we talked about this sort of egg. Do you remember the feeling? Yeah, yes, that's right. Yeah. Egg. But it was just a shape, an egg shape. But basically when you're, when your emotional brain which when you're young is you know is, is is in charge completely everything's through a filter of your emotions is in charge you can't be rational um so you're upset you're anxious you're worried if they understand that that they need to calm down mm. you know, the egg shape is basically you know at the top of the egg um it's just a little tiny bit um which is which is your rational thinking when you're upset, what you need to do is you need to bring it down so that the egg is a com completely bisected and you have your emotions and your logical thinking in balance. So basically, the gist of it is you need to calm down mm. before you can you can understand your anxiety. But it's perfectly natural and normal 
to be emotionally overwrought, anxious, and so on. That's why these calming techniques, the breathing techniques and so on, calm down corner, whatever, is so important. Because once you've done that, then you can be rational. You can discuss, as you did with your lovely, lovely girls, what it is. They can recognize this anxiety and what's causing it and so on and do something. Think about their coping mechanisms. Understand it for what it is, which is why these books are good, because they explain the actual physiological thing yeah. about, yeah. about you know, how yeah. anxiety works. Um, it's interesting, obviously, when we look at the stigma of mental illness and how it was pushed under the carpet years ago and with kids, you know, it was classed and, and labelled as a not normal, <laughs> you know what I mean, when I was at boarding school, really? it's not normal to be anxious, it's not normal to be depressed, it's, you need to you know, stiff up a lip and I, I went to an 80s um, boarding school, very, very strict and it was all very much like that so I grew up thinking that all these things are and feeling are not normal so actually nowadays what's good about nowadays is actually breaking down that stigma and, and the mental illness and the, the mental illness awareness that everybody does and we're all all feeling these emotions especially at the moment um and I suppose in a way in a positive way what's happened at the moment is there is a lot of support yes. out there um, there is as, there as, is a lot there's a lot online and there's I mean you know there's people like me and and but also from your own friends you know just you can get a, just chat with a friend mm. a coffee with a friend I know you might not be able to physically meet but having a coffee with a friend yeah is is actually some of the best therapy you can have you know mm. as an adult and the kids can the kids can get distracted with activities and, and, and games with their friends. But yeah, you're absolutely right. There's, we are more aware, mm. but we also there's still a stigma around it. There's people still feel that they ought to be able to control it, and and um and other people are doing better than they are, and so on. And actually, not necessarily the case. Um, we all have our public face, but often there's a lot going on behind it. In fact, I read a survey the other day that said something like one in four teenagers are actually um, depressed, diagnosed with, you know, I don't know whether they've actually been diagnosed, but, but it actually have depression, which is horrendous if you think about it. But, you know, that, I mean, the pressures of, of, of life today are quite, are quite heavy on teenagers talking about the moment, teenagers but, you know. <laughs> we've got our next uh, uh, uh there's just a couple of questions left yeah, actually sure. it, is, it is about the teenage years um okay. so uh, how can the, this lady uh, i think it's lady um how can i help my 15 year old son with anxiety about his health uh he's in a good place at the moment but i'd like to be prepared Yes, well, that one is probably something that falls into the hypothetical worry category, right? If you see what I mean, because unless he does have a problem with his health, if she says he's in a good place, so presumably he doesn't. He's, he's hypothesizing that maybe he's he's thinking about the like COVID and everything mm. like that. Mm. What if what mm. if I get ill? What if mom gets ill? And what yeah, exactly, happens? exactly. Well, that's catastrophizing, isn't it? And yeah. we need we need to counter that sort of thinking. Um, we all do it to some extent. It's quite natural. It's sort of this negative self talk that we often have this sort of inner chatter in our heads, um, and it's quite destructive. Um, it's a sort of a a um, I don't know what you, you it's it's almost like a fantasy that you know what what if I was what if I was ill? What if mum and dad got ill? What, what would happen? I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, it's sort of fortune telling, but actually nobody has a crystal ball. He doesn't have a crystal ball. And the chances are that none of this stuff is actually going to happen. So it's about, it's about calling it out for what it is and un identifying the unhelpful thought, which is, which is in your head sort of, you know, and recognizing it for what it is. It's a, it's a sort of, you know, you could, you can, um, you, you, you know you have you have to recognize it for what it is first of all and it again cbt techniques are helping are helpful here but basically if you if you know what it is um and you recognize it you can call it out as a sort of a fantasy it's not real um you can ask um you can ask him to rationalize you can ask him to talk about it why does he feel that way 
mm. and you can sort of um you know you can do some fact check fact checking on it um so what is the likelihood of somebody of his age getting covid what is the likelihood of mum and dad getting it pretty small um most likely um but you know you can you can you can try and sort of you know uh you know do, do present some facts and do some research which will help or get him to mm. put it in perspective um and so changing patterns of thinking can be pretty hard actually but um if you're struggling the first thing is empathy mm. because the feeling is real however fantastical it might be it's real so you need to empathize um you need to um try and help them with some coping mechanisms um you know, so talk about what would help to, to put the anxiety to bed, um, some of the things we've talked about, and also maybe get him to look at um, something like youngminds.org, okay. which is a really helpful um, website with lots of stuff for parents and young, you know, young children um, and teenagers with some sort of, you know, some ways you can help yourself. They sort of lead you through questions and you can follow the track and make some suggestions. But basically, it's recognizing it as a sort of a, um, you know, negative self-talk and fact-checking, rationalizing, talking about it. But your first port of call is going to be empathy mm -hmm. and, and talking about it, trying to give it some perspective. Um, it, what if, um, it's a uh, symptom of the situation, probably, yeah. rather than a real thing. And it's hypothetical if it's hypothetical you can let it go yeah. it's just how to let it go and you can help him to do that okay that's really helpful and i think uh, that this this next one follows on from that because it's about teenage boys again um what if um what are the any helpful tips for dealing with with teenage boys who don't up, open up very easily at all so you know, if they are having anxieties or they are very depressed or and they they clam up and don't want to open up how does a parent deal with that is it when we were talking about younger children a minute ago we were talking about sowing the seed yes yes <laughs> maybe that doesn't necessarily work with that age of a 15 year old or the teenage years well or does it it, do, it does yes i mean talking talking and empathizing again is, is really really helpful but um like i said you know you've got to you've got to recognize there is some resistance when you get to 15 years old that it is natural that they start to become more independent and one of the things that they do not all of them but some of them is that they stop talking to you so much mm -hmm. now when that's and sharing so much with you now when that's sort of you know amplified by the current situation mm -hmm. where perhaps you know they're fed up with it just being you <laughs> and you know yeah. it, it, it is a little unnatural at the moment they should be with their peers much more than they are this is so important at this at this stage um it acknowledge how hard it is they are missing out they should be with their peers they're missing um sort of rites of passage they're not going to this they're not doing that um yeah it's tough it's really tough and you need to empathize with that and acknowledge that and but but you know they they are they are still your child and they will still want you there even if they don't seem to want to engage um so if they disengage it's not or seem to disengage it's they you know let don't don't force them to talk to you because that resistance will be there and you will probably end up having a bigger wall you know if you if you if you force it but you need to first to, to just try and, and empathize and you need to talk you need to find those tangential ways that we talked about you know perhaps activities that you do together maybe go for a walk often teenagers don't want the face-to-face -face eye contact they're better that's talking that's right, side yeah. by side walking or it's alongside With each other in a car down. yeah exactly <laughs> the hair yeah. over their heads yeah <laughs> But looking for the cues, pick up on any little cue that you might have. Mm. There may be something in their behavior or something that they say. They might comment on something and you might say, OK, um, so, you know, so you found that interesting. Or they might say something that one of their friends has been doing. You might say, OK, and and um, and how's he doing? How's he how's how's he doing? Or, 
you know, um, has he been finding things? Or you just any little Do you cue. encourage them to open up to friends? Yeah, well. absolutely. Set up, set up. But like, like I said, you can they have lunch on on Zoom. You can suggest that they um that they that they try activities together. Very often, teenage boys are not likely to share their feelings readily with other teenage no. boys. They're more into doing than they are into talking. Mm. But doing is good. Doing is therapeutic, and they, the bonding and so on happens through that. And that's really good for their mental health. So, you know, um, it's good if you can work out what's going on, pick up on the cues, try and do activities together, try and, and, and work on that connection. Try not to take it personally. It isn't personal, um, yeah, however personal it might feel. It's quite normal. Um, even if it wasn't a pandemic, it's quite normal that kids at that age start to withdraw a little bit from communicating. But if you stay with it and you keep connected as much as you can and do as much as you can together and share things, have good conversations about things that perhaps have nothing to do with feelings. I don't yeah. talk about politics, talk about, I don't know, anything that's going on in the in the world, preferably not the pandemic. But and you those know, feelings might come out in those. It, then you're bonding, you're bonding. So when some big feeling comes up, you're more likely to hear about it. But if you press, you're probably going to come up against a brick wall. But try and um, figure out what's going on if you can. And as I said, be aware of the dangers of online um, activity and just see if you can make sure you know what's going yeah, on so something might be just in case there's yeah. something going on there because it is one of the signs of cyber bullying or or um grooming on stuff is is with is withdrawing and change behavior but it's just as well likely not to be that but it's just to be to be aware um and also it's worth thinking about whether it's happening in all areas of his life is it just with you is it with his friends is it with his schoolwork? what is it where what is he with, withdrawing from mm. is he not just is it just you is not opening up to or is he just not opening up to anything or anybody mm. so you know and, and, and sort of you know um do do, do that and, and also encourage a bit of self-reflection if you talk about your feelings sometimes yeah maybe if you open up with from from yes, yes that, that might encourage that encourages you. yeah without yeah. without pressing for but just talk about your yeah, I feelings do that a lot with the girls i say about how i'm feeling about things mm. uh, and tie it in with them and it, it just becomes quite a nice chat and a discussion absolutely about it. normalize it normalize talking about your feelings don't mm. press him to talk about him his he, he will decide as and when he wants to but if you normalize it, it makes it easier. Well, they, um, they, it was interesting yesterday, they were asking, uh, just out of the blue, um, asking sort of how I felt at their age and what feelings I felt and sort of when was my first uh, boyfriend and things like this. It was sort of a, a, an hour discussion about, you know, uh, about yeah. me being 11. Well, now you just have to start curating remember. the information that you tell them because it's sanitizing it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but no it's it's true the more we do that the better and then you, a you'll... Tip to open up that's a really nice tip actually to open up uh about yourself yeah it's not just or you know it's yeah. a, a, a partnership and also get get his father to do the same thing because yeah. particularly as a male role model because men often don't so much but very often um you know activity together is a good way of bonding with with mm -hmm. boys particularly um and you know but don't take it personally mm -hmm. empathize i think it's obviously there. It's, it's very tough for people um i know there's quite a few in my group who are single parents yeah. um of teenagers or young children and at the moment that's that's tough you know really tough. There's, there's not another uh, parent to you know take control or help or the support or yeah. do activities one-to-one -one. so that's that's another level of that is that is really really hard I think what we what we also should just remember though is that we not we can't do everything and we shouldn't expect ourselves to do everything you know you if you are doing your best and you are there for your children um imperfectly of course, because we are all imperfect. But if you are there for them um, and you're doing your best, then you are good enough. Absolutely good enough.
Good mm. enough is good enough. And, um, and that's actually really important for them to learn too, because they're never going to be perfect either. Mm. So when we lose our temper, or we find we're struggling, or we haven't got through all we need to get through, or we're worried because they haven't got other adults in their life, or whatever, and we talk about it, we express our feelings and so on, and we express our frustration, and we apologize when we lose it, we are modeling we are modeling the kind of people we want them to be, which is open and honest, imperfect, are ready to apologize. Um, and if they see us as imperfect, but doing our best, loving them, giving them everything that we can, that's all we can do. And they will grow up and knowing that and they will look back on this pandemic, knowing that that was there that you were there for them despite yeah, everything that's the main thing yeah. that's the main thing good enough is good enough so don't beat yourself up none of us none of us have kind of come out with this feeling that we got it <laughs> right completely because we're not but we just need to be doing our best and to keep trying and to acknowledge that it's not going to be great um but we're going to get through it together with them keep the communication going be honest be imperfect courageous keep trying that's brilliant. Thank you, Jill. And uh, I think just I just picked up on just a last question and then we'll we'll summarize and close off. Um, just wondering how to settle a seven year old boy's nerves after he watched a scary program with his sister and it's haunting him at bedtime. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Right. Well, again, um, there's some of the things we've already talked about yeah um you know the books we talked about where you understand where anxiety comes from um when we were you know running around um you know um it, it, as, as tribal people in days gone by we, we we had this sort of fight flight or freeze response we, we we had to keep ourselves safe from predators so we um you know, our brains, we need to explain this to kids, how our brains work, you know, our brains go into this sort of, um, are always trying to protect us. Um, and so, but sometimes they are get too protective, they go too far. So our rational brain has, because it's, it's that emotional brain that does that, our rational brain has to say, okay, well, look, you know, that wasn't real. Yeah. We need to understand that that wasn't real. So if, if kids can understand about some basics about how their brains work and about the fight and flight response, again, it's in these books and you can you can Google it um, as well. Um, it helps them to understand that this is this is not real. This is just my body doing what it's supposed to do. But actually, um, this is a really, really big feeling. It is a real, we, we, you know, we can explain that to them, but the feeling is real. We have to acknowledge the feeling. We have to acknowledge all feelings are real, even if behaviors we don't like. We, we accept all feelings. So this is a big, scary feeling and it's very real. So we need to just acknowledge it, understand it. We don't want to look under the bed and say, look, it's not there because that's actually just sort of, you know, um, dismissing. Yeah. You know, it's dismissing and belittling the, the, the feeling so you need to acknowledge that it's real and that it's scary but it, but try and understand how the explain how the brain works a little bit and that you know this is the his brain is trying to protect you but we need to calm it down and maybe like with some of the things we talked about like um making the um anxiety into a creature a, a thing yes a thing yes. or or um you know, writing, uh, sorry, looking at some of these books that we talked about, and we can put some and links. And the big bag of worries would be quite good at that age. Big, exactly, the big bag of worries, and you, you know, and 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 that sort of thing. Um, asking them, asking him, what would help? What would help? Because sometimes kids come up with the most creative ideas about how they can help themselves. I know your girls do. They well, always they like, have good they like ideas. Drawing stuff, and yeah, you know, they might. Uh... You know, there's lots of creative ways that children can exactly i mean he he ask him what would help um but 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 also you know for us to understand that it is one of those hypothetical worries mm. it's not real but for for him it's real so and maybe at to, that age the seven seven years old perfect age for things like the worry jar the journal exactly the exactly um, the worry monster that takes it away overnight and yes 
exactly but don't try and rationalize don't try and dismiss don't say and say well it's not real or you know you can see it's not there you know no, and there's no monster right. under the bed or whatever um because it is a real feeling you need to empathize first and foremost with all of these things we've been talking about the very first thing to do always is empathize because these feelings are really real empathize say you get it i understand this is really hard oh, it's really scary um you know it's it's difficult to calm yourself you sometimes you can't explain why you're anxious you're just anxious but that's because of the way your brain is working so this is why these little like these this, these kids books are quite handy because they can explain that but yes worry jars um the the, the, the character who embodies the worries takes care of them for you um maybe some of those things will help well, the brilliant tips, brilliant tips throughout and lots of advice and lots of practical advice and lots of things. And well, thank you. Um, so. You do, uh, we touched upon this at the beginning, but you do quite a lot of Zooms. I do <laughs> so Zoom. More and more Zooms I'm now. Zooming. Yes, I Zoom. Zoom I, I can, yeah, so no. tell, us, um, tell us what um, you're, you're working on in the future, what you're running, any courses you, you do well, want to at the moment i'm not running anything face to face of course I, I i'm doing individual consultations i'm also another thing that i say to people is if they want to talk to me but they want to keep the cost down a little bit it's quite fun to get like a group of friends together yeah. not like a formal you know course as such but you know just if you can get three or four friends together and we can do something if it's got kids of a similar age you know we can we can we can work on we can do a, we can do a course okay. um, together. Um, we can work through some parenting skills, and that enables us to also talk about um, individual cases and situations that they are encountering as well, which is quite nice because there's, in a small group like that, there's time to do that. Um, I, as I say, individual. At the moment, I haven't got a course um, scheduled, but I am working on putting a new one online, a six-module course, which is pretty much ready. I haven't set a date yet, but a six module course, which will be available on Zoom. Um, so, um, yeah, that that'll, that'll be, I'll be notifying. One -one. Sorry? Is that one to one? That, that one? Well, no, that won't be one to one. I can do it one to one. I recently okay. did it one to one for a, for a family. Um, that was interesting because they didn't speak English. That, that, <laughs> that was quite tricky, right. but we, we managed <laughs> with interpreter. But but yes, yeah, so um, I can do it one to one or in a little group, but but I'm going to be putting this six six module one out. The difference between that and, uh, and 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 the traditional five module one that I've done is that this one talks more about has an extra session on keeping calm. It's about the parent the the, 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 the parent the, rather than the parenting, um, and so um, I think that's particularly useful at the moment. So I'm I'm. That's pretty much ready to go. I just haven't set a date for it yet, but that will be coming up soon. But I'm I'm here all the time. I can do an individual. I will. We'll put yeah. your um, website link and um, do, Facebook do. and everything that we need on on Thank the. You. Uh, well, I always we I always say to people this. if they want to just chat to me like for fifteen minutes for free, just to see if there's a, you know if they think they could work with me yeah. and they'd like to, then that's fine. And then if they want to schedule a session, we can do that. But they're always happy to have a quick chat for free if they want to just sort of. Yeah, and I'm not, just saying, I'm not just saying this, but I touched upon our personal experience with working with you, but just being amazing. And in fact, actually, Thank we'll you. be, um, and Nick said the other day, I think we might need just a little extra session <laughs> because um, we, we just uh, had um, just at the moment getting towards teenage years. We're just getting a little bit of a pushback on things. So we just need yeah. to just reboot. You know, so well it's, it's a whole new ball game but yeah. all the work that you've done will stand you in such brilliant stead for the teenage years it's, it's a marathon not a sprint this <laughs> but it's but it's wonderful i love the teenage years and people dread them but for me they've been the best and i think it's it's because they're becoming they're becoming young people young adults and they and, and they are you know they're really beginning to become individuals and so differently when they're younger you you know 
they're cute, they're gorgeous, and they're challenging and difficult sometimes. But then their personalities and their individual natures become so much more obvious as they get to teenage years. And they have real struggles as well with trying to find their own identity and their own independence. And, but, it, but it's all the stuff you've done is going to stand you in great stead because you've got that connection and they talk. <laughs> And they communicate, <laughs> and and no, and that's the, the feeling. Main they thing. talk about how they feel, and yeah. I think that's the main thing: is the communication, the empath empathy, the acknowledging the feelings. Yes, that it's normal. Um, the chats that we have most nights on the bed, you know, or in their corner, or wherever they want to yeah. have chats on the walks. You know, we have really um, the reason why we do such long walks was about sort of seven or eight miles. Um, throughout the week is that we get talking and yeah. well, we've spoken this another hour and we've done another that's few months. brilliant but, you, know, you see it's so that's time. all building the connection that you need because when you have connection you can deal with so much if you don't have connection you really will struggle and yeah. um, so work on and that you're right as things change and they have I've noticed the girls shifting in personality shifting in the way they deal with things and stuff but uh, um, and some things not so welcome so which is why we might just have a little plug-in session with you and we'll Absolutely. be on all day again <laughs> love to love to no thank you ever so much jill um it's just been amazing uh jill from parenting and you and we'll put all the links to her website and uh, as jill said she's available for uh, Absolutely. And, and 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 don't don't feel that this is only for parents who are struggling i tell you i mean parenting is a challenge and honestly a little bit of help now and again um whether you're struggling or not a little bit of tweak here and there can make a difference so yeah, yeah. love to hear from anybody who who feels they'd like to do that so thank lovely. you lara it's been great it's lovely to see you yeah, we'll do another session at some time yeah. because, well there's lots That's of two yeah. coming forward you know uh, hopefully as lockdown eases at some point you know there'll be other oh, challenges good. that we'll be facing so it'll be yeah there'll be there'll be a different set of challenges then um i think one actually just before we go one topic which would be good to cover at some point later on uh, this year is um uh, cyber stuff sort of you know maybe um technology and what the dangers are out there and mm. how to deal with that as a parent and a child so. it's a big it's one always one of the main concerns um and um and we're all that much more familiar with it now so perhaps it'll be a little bit less scary for we parents to get involved <laughs> yes a bit well yeah. thank you ever so much jill all pleasure you take care take all care. right bye bye